In the spleen, we see lots of incidental findings. Yes, in spleen, we see malignancies anywhere from primary sarcomas to processes like lymphoma. The majority are going to be incidental. And there have been several articles that make the point that the majority of incidental splenic lesions like this article are going to be benign. Again, you need to look at them, see what information you can get. At times, you'll have to bring the patient back and do a dual phase acquisition. We rarely do splenic biopsies, but again, it's important to look at things. Clinical history, prior CT scans are very valuable. I think one of the things to really reinforce, the easiest thing to solve the problem of an incidental OMA is an old scan. If you have a splenic lesion, you don't know what it is, but you have a scan from five years ago and it's the same, it's benign. Obviously, looking at other CT findings and other organs, lab findings are all going to be very, very helpful. In this article by Seward, an incidental splenic mass, the likelihood of malignancy is 1%. Okay. Follow up of incidental splenic masses may not be indicated. Now, sometimes we have challenges. One of them is an accessory spleen. Most accessory spleens are easy to recognize. They're in the splenic hilum and can occur in 16% of patients. So they're very common, but every once in a while, they can be problematic. Thing to remember is with contrast, accessory splenic tissue looks identical to the normal spleen. So if you see this lesion here, and you say, oh my goodness, I see an incidental lesion in the pancreas. Could this be a neuroendocrine tumor? It might be, but if you look at it, it enhances just like the spleen. And often you can see splenic tissue pushing into the pancreas and simulating an accessory spleen. Another accessory spleen, the tail of pancreas. Again, look how nicely it batches the enhancement. Typically, neuroendocrine tumors are going to be much more vascular and do not look like the spleen. Here it is again. Same case on washout value. Here's a larger lesion in the tail of the pancreas, which you can say again, is this a tumor? It's incidental, but there it is matching the spleen on arterial and venous phase imaging. If you're uncertain, if you really aren't positive it's an accessory spleen and you're not sure, in those situations, tag red blood cell studies or just sulfur colloid studies will work very well. And here's just that same case. You can see the accessory spleen here and here and the normal spleen all enhance very similarly and you could reach the correct diagnosis. Now, there are a range of benign splenic lesions, cysts, hemangioma, hematomas. Patients can be symptomatic. Cysts can be very large and patients need to get a splenectomy. Cysts, particularly related to old trauma, can calcify, like in this example. And you can see patients with multiple cysts. Again, multiple low-density splenic lesions. You can think about lymphoma, but that's soft tissue density. This is water density. There's no problem. It's a leave-alone lesion. Hemangiomas occur in the spleen, but they don't often have the same type. Linda showed you about hemangiomas in the liver. Only about a quarter of hemangiomas in the spleen behave very similar to liver hemangiomas. Most are kind of challenging. They're multiple and they're small. Here's more of a classic one, sort of a ring enhancement, easy enough to call hemangioma. Others are more difficult. When we see, I mentioned a splenic lesion, look at other organs. Certain diseases, for example, involve liver and spleen, like lymphoma, melanoma, or an immunosuppressed patient's infection. You also can have sarcoidosis. This looks like all the world, like malignancy. This was an incidental finding in a patient post-MVA. And the thought was, could this be lymphoma? Possibility, melanoma. Patient was entirely asymptomatic, and it was only because of the MVA the patient had a scan. This ended up being sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis, as we all know, is a great mimicker. And sarcoid involves the spleen in up to 70% of cases. And here's an example of splenic involvement without hepatic involvement. Okay, just very important to recognize. Other incidental findings, history makes it easy. Sickle cell disease, 
from splenic infarction to autoinfarction to sequestration and the like can all be recognized. <music> <laughs>